pleased to welcome to the White House the members of the new Advisory Council on Private Sector Initiatives. The members of the Cabinet who will be serving on the Council, Bob Galvin, our new Chairman, Vice Chairman Gloria Toot, Bill Verity, who chaired our earlier task force on private sector initiatives. And you can see that I have also thought of your moral welfare, the appointment of Cardinal Kroll to this group. I haven't seen so much talent gathered together here at the White House since the Beach Boys were here. <laughs> but, I'll tell you, we're here today to talk about a popular revolution that is going to rival rock and roll when we all look, look back on it. Private sector initiatives are as basic as the American traditions of neighbor helping neighbor, as selfless as our millions of volunteers, and as simple as a helping hand. But these private actions are part of a national movement that is sweeping across the country like a prairie fire. The American people have developed a a new way of thinking about how to solve social and economic problems. Maybe I should say they have rediscovered an old way. We sort of got weaned away from what used to be traditional Americanism by government saying, uh, we'll do it. And the people have found out again about what they used to do. I had a letter from a man one day, very discouraged, a businessman in business troubles and all, and it wasn't too long ago. And I wrote him a three-page letter that I hoped was the kind of talk Rockney gave Notre Dame <laughs> about win one for the Gipper. Um, but he was saying that we finally ended up with this tragic line to me, if I knew of a country, any place in the world that was like America was a hundred years ago, I'd go there. And I tried to tell him about people like yourselves and that uh, we're going to be like we were a hundred years ago. Today, you can go about any community and discover private individuals that are creatively solving public problems. I wish you could have been to all the places that I've already been and seen the remarkable public-spirited things that I've already witnessed. And I also hear countless stories of people whom I'll never be able to meet who have taken the initiative to find private solutions to public problems. I could give you examples all afternoon of the efforts that are already being made. In Harris County, Texas, Dr. Joel Reed and the Harris County Medical Society have developed a system whereby computers schedule indigent families into time slots that doctors donate. The McDonald's Corporation, already known for its Ronald McDonald houses, has now launched a major child safety belt campaign in cooperation with the National Safety Council. And I hope they're just as successful with the safety program as they are with the hamburgers. In New York, the Private Industry Council and American Express have found a new way to put homebound, handicapped people to work. American Express has given word processing equipment to handicapped employees who are now able to work in their homes. A whole new market of protective work, productive workers has been opened up. Again, I refer to some of those letters I get, and they range across the spectrum, age-wise, occupation-wise, everything else. I have a letter on my desk that a little girl in fifth grade wrote, and it must be a good school like yours, Paul, because it's very well written and correctly punctuated and not a word misspelled. But with the letter came $187 that this fifth grade class had raised and sent in to be applied to the national debt. When I was in fifth grade, I'm not sure that I knew what a national debt was. Uh, of course, when I was in fifth grade, we didn't have one. <laughs> but, but there are examples of food banks and jobathons and elderly care and any number of, of good causes. And everywhere I travel, people are forming new coalitions to explore ways for their communities to meet child care needs, help displayed workers find new jobs, and address important community problems like drug and alcohol abuse. Everywhere you look, people are developing creative solutions to our local needs. And here, because it's such an important issue, let me mention there are many, many ways the private sector could help the nation out on its educational problems. Throughout the country, businesses are adopting schools 
and new educational partnerships are forming. Private citizens and parents are getting involved in schools, and I hope that you'll take a special look at what we can do uh, here. Neighbor helping neighbor is an American tradition. But let me tell you something, the secret's getting out. Not long ago, I was down in Williamsburg. You may have read about it. It was in all the papers. And I just learned that at the Williamsburg summit, the Japanese heard about our private sector initiatives. They've asked for information, and they're studying its possibilities. And if the Japanese are interested, we must really be on to something. <laughs> As members of the new Advisory Council on Private Sector Initiatives, I'm asking you to contribute your energy to a national movement that's already energized. All over the country, people are finding new solutions for the problems they see in their communities, but they can use your help too. We want to activate even more of that energy in our people. We need your help in multiplying the applications of all the good private sector ideas and projects that abound in the country. We want the individual or company who seeks to do something about displaced workers, for example, to know there are successful programs that have worked in other communities. Bob Galvin and Jim Coyne have some proposals on how we can achieve all these ends. We want the person with a good idea about how to help with social and economic problems to know that he or she can make a difference. We need each of you to help us find ways to build the networks, develop the partnerships, and find the resources to make seemingly small ideas become national solutions to broad problems. And this is a call to action. We need your help. The nation needs your help to ensure that our communities, our volunteers, our service organizations and corporations are active participants in solving our critical problems. I believe in what Americans are doing for other Americans, and I believe in what you on this council can do. I have to mention, when this idea came for a private initiative task force to begin with, to find out what could be done, I it's a wonderful thing. We've got some private initiative people that man the telephone switchboards in the White House. I picked up the phone and said, get me Bill Verity. And when I got him, I got him in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean on a ship coming home from Europe. And I told him what I had in mind, and he didn't hesitate one second. And uh, he was on board before he landed in America. And the task force did find out, and a, and a great deal of their effort was in finding out what is going on throughout the country. And now we found out in all these various communities these things that are going on. But the need is to just tell others that are looking for solutions to problems in, in their own country. And I could tell you that, Bill, I never told you this before, but uh, one of the places where this idea first had its origin, where I'm concerned, was in California. There were letters that my people knew I wanted to see letters from people who had exhausted all the bureaucratic answers and somehow their problem did not lend itself to solution by government. And I wanted to see those. And so they were delivered to me. And I picked up the phone a few times and I called several people throughout the state of California that I knew personally. And I told them about cases like this. And I said, if I gave you a call, knowing they could afford it, I said, about one of these things, would you be interested in helping someone like this? And to a man and woman, they volunteered. And so I used to pick up the phone. And um, one of them was the case of an unemployed man. And uh, he's now the manager of a chain of restaurants in California. Uh, because the ex-actor that was owning owner of those restaurants uh, put him to work. And that's what it came to be. There was another one, I got a follow-up letter from a widow and her small son who had the only kid in his class without a bicycle and so forth and trying to get along on welfare and uh, I called another fellow and I got a call later on and she said, the Santa Claus that personally came to my door and delivered the bicycle and many other things, she said, I didn't recognize him, but she said later in one of the cartons I found a sales slip made out to a Mr. Sinatra. Could it have been 
And I wrote back and says, yep, <laughs> it was. But uh, the idea lived with me till here and this original task force. And now all of you. And uh, I think you're going to get as much as you give out of what's, uh, what takes place uh, throughout this country. You're going to, you're going to find that uh, America is off on a course that uh, you, I think, will more have to fight them off uh, than to rope them in uh, to doing uh, the things that, that have to be done. And uh, I just want to thank you all again from the bottom of my heart. And I know in this room are so many examples of people who have already been doing things like this. God bless you all. Thank you. Permit me for just a moment, Mr. President, to respond for your counsel. This morning we had the privilege of presenting ourselves to each other. You would have been proud to know that you have selected people with credentials in this arena of special interest to you and to us. And when we met this morning, we exchanged a number of thoughts. I will select only one to complement yours. We think that there is an additional phenomenon going on in our society that is going to be a most remarkable support for this reinvigoration of privacy, volunteerism, etc. And that is the spirit of participation that is going on in unions and companies and in agencies. Some people have called it the quality of work life or quality circles or participative management. But our citizens are getting used to a very special new responsibility of sharing in the management of their institutions. And they're doing that by presenting their personal responsibility in partnership with their fellows and their ladies. And I believe that we can feed on this. And I think that we can make out of this, among so many other of the motivations of the American citizenry, a reawakening that you will be very proud of, sir, and we're pleased to serve you in this cause. <laughs>